Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here. I hope you're having a great day. Today is part five of our uh, installation of uh, a nested uh, workstation. And we're going to be doing an install of VCSA today. So let's take a look at what's going on. So we're going to do a quick review of the plan and then get uh, right to installing uh, VCSA into workstation. Promise you not as many slides today. Uh, currently, uh, you know, we were just going to start here at part five and next we'll be getting into part six will be installation of the host and setting up the vSphere environment uh, if you haven't watched the previous parts you might want to do that I know 4a and 4b was uh, quite a long video it took a lot of steps there to get that uh, domain controller up and running but uh, we're good to go with that now and let's get on to VCSA so overall series goals as you can see right now, we're uh, doing uh, VCSA 8 installing in the yellow here. Everything else uh, striked out is done. We've got uh, Windows 11 installed. We've got, uh, you know, Workstation 17. And we've got our networking set up. Plus, we've also established remote access uh, for the uh, Internet access for the VM. So we're in good shape here. Okay, so let's get on to doing this install. So here's what we're targeting. We're targeting this uh uh, blue server here, the VCSA. Now, remember the ones that are in blue, like the VCSA 8, uh, the Active Directory, and the three hosts below are blue because they're installed directly on Workstation. The purple HCI bench here is one we're going to be installing as a VM on top of the ESXi servers. But for now, we need to focus on VCSA 8. That's the next thing we need to establish before we get our host going. Uh, so just a bit of planning, something to think about. When we actually deploy this uh, OVF, uh, it's going to deploy a lot of disk, right? Uh, 581 gigabytes of disk, somewhere in that range, right? That's, that's quite a bit of disk that's going on. But in reality, uh, I've installed it and uh, completed the installation, and it's only taking up about maybe 30 gigs active, right? So that means these disks are probably going to grow over time and could take up to a maximum of 581 gig. And this is just something you're going to want to monitor uh, in your environment to see how things are going for uh, for you. For mine, I've installed it. It's been up and running for a while. It's only pulling about 30 gig. I'm good to go for now. I just got to keep an eye on it. Something to think about, right? All right. So these are our steps to do the install today. And we're going to go right into lab after this, right? So we're going to extract the VCSA ISO first into a folder. Uh, then we're going to use the OVF tool to uh, create a OVF from the OVA file. This is what we extracted, right? Uh, inside of there, we're going to delete the manifest file or the MF file and get rid of it. Uh, we're going to edit the uh, uh, VCSA OVF uh, to make it user configurable. And then using Workstation, we're going to import the OVF uh, to set up the VCSA. These steps are necessary when you're installing uh, the uh, uh, VCSA OVF directly onto Workstation like we're doing. If you installed this directly onto ESXi, you would not have to do these steps. These are extra steps we have to do to enable this uh, VCSA to be installed directly onto Workstation. And with that, let's go ahead and get to the lab. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, VCSA install. So the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, uh, as always, uh, is download the files. If you haven't done that yet, make sure you get the VCSA 8 uh, download and ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to do is use a program uh, like 7-Zip or actually use 7-Zip, your choice, right? But what you want to do is you want to extract this ISO into a folder. Now, I already went ahead and uh, took care of all that and got it downloaded. So let's take a look here. And here's the extracted folder. Now, I put it on my C drive under a temp folder, extracted it here. What you're looking for is this file right here, this OVA file. And you're going to want to note this directory path. That's going to be important coming up here real soon. Okay, so where it's at, it's in the temp folder, VCSA folder right there. This is the uh, OVA file that we want to target. <clears throat> you also need to know where the OVF tool is, which is directly above it. This folder is going to be important, Win32, because this is where the OVF tool is that we're going to need to run uh, to change it. So once you have that set up, you've got VCSA uh, extracted, you know where all your tools are and everything's ready to go. Then you just need to go into your DOS. And basically, you're going to run the uh, OVF tool. Now you can see I called it right here. If we look at it right there, there's the OVF tool. Okay, The source file which is the OVA file first, OK? 
Okay. And then what do I want to call it? Okay. The OVF file. I want to call it OVF. So OVA to OVF, that's what it does. This process takes uh, about five, 10 minutes to run. The ex zip extraction will also take five, 10 minutes to run uh, to get this done. But when you've got it completed and it's all done, then you can go into your file explorer and let's take a look there. And you'll see that its extraction is complete. Now, I didn't direct it where to go, so it, it extracted it right into the Win OVF tool Win32 folder. And here's the files that I need to work with. So I'm just going to grab these real quick. Let's cut them. And let's put them back into uh, the temp folder. A little bit easy, easier to work with them here. So we're going to place them uh, right there for now. All right, with everything extracted and in the folder that we want it to be in, there's two things uh, we need to do here. One, we need to delete this manifest file. Now, if you're uncomfortable doing this, you might just come in here and call it .old, okay? That'll take care of it as well. Or you could just move it out of here. I'm gonna simply just delete it out. There's no reason for uh, us to have this file here. It's a manifest file. It's not needed for what we're doing. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we're gonna need to edit the uh, VCS OVA uh, and change one of the configurations to make it uh, user uh, configurable. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go into the OVA right here, excuse me, OVF right here, <laughs> and we're gonna open it up with Notepad. Okay, once inside, we're gonna do edit and we're gonna do a find and what we're looking for is a very specific string. So we are looking for uh, guest info dot cis dot upgrade dot import dot directory. Hopefully we got that right. There it is. All right. Now that we found that, what we're looking for is this string right here, which is the user configurable field. We want to change this from false to true. Okay. Now, once we have that, we just need to save it. And our OVF is uh, finally ready and prepared to be installed into Workstation. So it's worth noting that you don't need to do these steps when you're installing on ESXi, it's going to install on ESXi fine. You only need to do these steps uh, when you're working with Workstation. Uh, but now that we have uh, the VCSA appliance uh, uh, prepped and ready to go, we can start with the installation into uh, Workstation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that started. Minimize everything here. Time to get into work. All right, so we have the... Uh, workstation open now and also we have the active directory controller up and running it's going to be necessary for uh, dns and uh, different resolutions now keep in mind remember this uh, guy is on our uh, network 10 so when we look at its settings and we go into its networking its primary network adapter is that 10 that's going to be important because we're going to want to set the vcsa to that as well so all we have to do is now is go into file and open and move to our folder where we created our uh, OVF file <clears throat> and click open. And now it's gonna start going through its, uh, the prompts. So let's put a name in for it. And we wanna choose that file location that we uh, had uh, set up earlier. So if we go down to uh, the drives we can see right there there is our VCSA drive and our folder and that's where we want to uh, target it so we should make a new folder there and call it uh, VCSA 223 that's the folder we want it in and choose OK next tiny is OK don't need anything big here for three hosts and now we just need to fill in the various network information all right, so I went ahead and filled in uh, all the IP information here. Uh, now, one thing about this is you might get a little confused about some of these, what their ask is here. But if you highlight over the, or hover over the information here in this area right here, it'll give you an idea of uh, what they're looking for. Uh, in this case, like IPv4, or V6, your network mode is static, you know, your uh, subnet prefix, uh, things of that nature uh, that you uh, need to put in. 
uh, including your uh, gateway, which is our uh, Active Directory server, is also our gateway, and it's also our DNS server, which is handy. Now, one thing about this is, is don't click the import button. It's really easy to see a list here on the left and want to click import, but that's not what you need to do. You need to click down the next one and put in your information here. Okay, system configuration again. Okay, nothing needs to be filled in for upgrade. We're not doing anything. Uh, miscellaneous can be uh, uh, skipped as well. And now down to uh, network properties where we fill this in. And click on import. Now, it's going to start importing uh, the VCSA. This process can take a little bit. The one thing you're looking for is as soon as it reboots, you're going to want to get over here and make sure that uh, its networking is set to that 10 network so that it can properly communicate uh, when it comes up. All right, just about finished there. There it is. So now we want to go in here and say edit settings and get its network fixed to that segment we want, which is 10. Okay, that way when it boots up, it's already on the 10 network and that should align everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this boot. Uh, what we're waiting for is for it to come to its final screen, which is kind of a bluish and black screen that uh, gives us an IP address and tells us uh, where to go to administrate it on port uh, 5480. So that's what we're waiting for next. So this screen is probably going to pop up and you may be tempted to log in here, but it's not necessary. Uh, just be patient. Uh, let uh, the VCSA do its thing. Eventually, it's going to come up to that blue and black screen uh, prompting you to log in through a web interface. That's what we're looking for. All right. It took it a few minutes to get to this point. And as you can see, a few things are still kind of going on in the background here. Again, let's just be patient. Uh, let it do what it needs to do, and uh, we'll get to it uh, here in just a minute. All right, so there it is. It's stabilized now. We got a consistent uh, kind of this blue and blackish grayish screen, and we're ready to go. So let's switch over to the Active Directory controller. Now what I've done is I've already typed in HTTPS and the uh, fully qualified domain name followed by 5480, and we're going to log in here and, and complete the install. Okay, so let's enter our password in we put in. Okay, so now it's finishing up stage one. Let's go ahead and let it uh, complete what it needs to do. And then we'll follow up within the stage two, which is some other uh, items that we need to fill out. All right, so it completed its phase there. Let's go into setup. Okay. Stage two is where we're at now. One is complete. Next. All our information is here. Probably just want to double check it, make sure it all looks good and is correct. We're going to change our time server to synchronize with host and put our time server in, which happens to be our DNS server, which is handy. Okay. And I'm going to choose activate for uh, SSH. That way I don't have to do it uh, later, which is fine for a home lab. Okay, next. Okay, let's finish our information here. Now, we're doing a uh, new SSO domain. We're not joining an existing one here. So we're just gonna call our vSphere.local and put in our administrator password. Okay, click next. You can join the customer experience improvement program if you like. Ready to complete and click finish. Okay, this is gonna run for a while. We're gonna go ahead and let it uh, complete. And when we're done, we should be able to log into our VCSA server and uh, we'll be all done with this uh, part in the series. All right, now that it's uh, done being configured, it's gonna switch over into actually connecting into it. So let's go ahead and do that.
all right now we're seeing everything's looking good <clears throat> everything's in the green just one last test let's make sure we can get into the vcsa itself Now, one thing I'll note is when you're doing the VCSA install, be patient, wait for it. This took actually quite a bit of time to uh, get this last part installed. In fact, I actually went and took a break and came back, right? And as you can see, <clears throat> everything is operational and we're ready to take that next step, which will be installing our ESXi servers and then actually getting it configured into VSA, set VSA. VCSA, excuse me, <laughs> too many acronyms today. But folks, with that, let's end uh, wrap up part five. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're making some great progress. Looking forward to uh, finishing up this uh, these series really soon uh, with some great ES ESXi installs and VSAN ESA, all types of stuff coming. So looking forward to it. Take care. Don't forget to hit subscribe.